mice and men. Stem cells have stopped Parkinson's disease in a mouse brain. Are humans next? The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Scientists may be slowly zeroing in on a cure for Parkinson's disease, the disorder caused by the death of brain cells that make the chemical messenger dopamine. Dopamine controls movement. Without it, the patient's movements become increasingly uncoordinated. Symptoms may also include tremors, stiff muscles and joints, depression, even dementia. For several years, we've been following a victim of the disease, a plucky minister from Massachusetts named William Abernathy. He allowed us to go with him to a checkup by his neurologist, Dr. David Standard. So how have you been doing? Uh, pretty good. Yeah? Uh, some ups and downs. What's happened since the last time we talked? Dr. Standard specializes in Parkinson's. At this point, he's been tracking Abernathy's condition for several years. Parkinson's afflicts more than a million Americans, and there is no cure. Drug regimens help relieve symptoms and may work for years, but they produce unpleasant side effects, and in the end, they only delay the inevitable progression of the disease. One new treatment uses surgery to implant an electrode deep in the patient's brain to get the dopamine flowing again. In Reverend Abernethy, even that produced limited results. I would say that the deep brain stimulator has helped perhaps a bit, but it certainly hasn't been a dramatic improvement in this particular situation. Um, it's in fact even unclear how much benefit you've gotten from that. Mm -hmm. And you still have a lot of trouble, and I think if there was a stem cell therapy that I could offer to you today, I would offer it to you, and then it would be up to you to decide whether you had that or not. Sign me up. Stem cells, another term in need of definition. Stem cells are called that because they are the cells from which all other cells grow. After a human egg is fertilized, it begins to divide almost immediately. By day four, the embryo has become a hollow ball of about 300 cells, no larger than the head of a pen. This is the blastocyst. On the inside of the ball is a clump of embryonic stem cells. They have the potential to become virtually all the cells and cell types in the human body, from skin cells to blood cells to liver cells to brain cells. But the blastocyst is an early stage of an embryo. If it were properly implanted, it could grow to become a new individual. To harvest the precious stem cells, the embryo is destroyed. That triggered a nationwide controversy. Does that little ball of cells represent a human life? Presidents and preachers all weighed in. That no human life should be exploited or extinguished for the benefit of another. If it's uh, embryonic stem cell research, it all involves uh, the destruction of an embryo. And uh, so it begins with an abortion. But that controversy was toned down considerably when researchers found a way to take any adult cell and turn it into a stem cell. A uh, researcher, Shinya Yamanaka, who just won the Nobel Prize for this, um, found a set of genes, four genes, that he could insert into a skin cell. And when he did that, the skin cell got reprogrammed. It changed its fate and made it behave like an embryonic cell. And those cells could be cultured in a dish, and they could actually make any tissue of the body. So it was quite an amazing experiment. An implant of stem cells could replace his malfunctioning brain cells and reverse Parkinson's disease, in theory. So far it has worked in rats and is now being tested in primates. But at the engineering school at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, where a specialty is bioengineering, we found that was just a first step. Even when we have a model of the disease, a, a, a mouse that expresses Parkinson's-like disease, it's not exactly the same as human Parkinson's disease. So we can learn a lot from these experiments, and we must do them. We have no choice. We must do them. But we have to understand that to move from a mouse to a human is a big jump. The difficulties Dr. Boyan points out mean that stem cell replacement therapy for Parkinson's disease is still not ready for use in human medicine. 
The prospect of replacing malfunctioning brain cells is bright, but there's no way to speed up that process of testing and finding out how stem cells work. There's a terrible frustration on the part of the public that promising developments move so slowly from the lab to the doctor's office. We don't understand all of the, the need, how, how many do we have to have, how frequently do they need to be given, um, how do we make sure they stay where we want them to go for the length of time that we want them to be there. And, and we don't have the technology that lets us do those things yet. And for William Abernathy, there was to be no cure. He lost his 27-year battle with Parkinson's disease. He died peacefully in 2010. The Reverend Dr. William Abernathy was 70 years old. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.